I want to welcome you to Association Chat Podcast. Jen Louie, woo, yay. <laughs> hey, Kiki, thanks so much for having me. And big thanks to Big Red M for hosting oh, yeah. this. I don't know if you found this, Kiki, but like, for me, how you get paid when you're on your own is so radically different than getting a steady paycheck. Yeah. So I have two types of clients. I have organizations and then I have individuals. The individuals pay me in advance and then I like owe them for months. Mm -hmm. um, and so the money comes in early and then, you know, I need to kind of obviously deliver. With the organizations, it's sort of the opposite. You deliver the work and then you wait. You send your invoice and you wait like 30 days, sometimes 60 days to get paid. So it's so uncertain. And that's why that savings is really important. So you have a little bit of buffer for mm -hmm. those times where there is nothing coming in, but you know something's going to come in later. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that's the other piece is I think that when people are looking at making that transition into some other kind of role. And, and really big in my mind as I'm thinking about this is obviously in the association space, you see a lot of examples of people who move from being an association executive to being a consultant. Uh, or working for a consulting agency, going out on their own, and then being an association executive for a while. And it's and and there's a lot of moving around. Also working for in the industry partner space, where you go and you might be working for a software firm that supports associations or something like that. And all of it is a little bit different, and it's a different perspective. But that piece where you're you're turning your knowledge or you're going into consulting or you're starting your own side hustle. Maybe you're starting your own, you know, I don't know, software business or something like that. That piece is really scary because it, it is this leap of faith. And if you're not thinking about the different ways that revenue can come in, like diversifying, this is where I get paid up front. This is where I, you know, this is something where I might have to wait a little while then you can find yourself in those um, highs and lows in a more dramatic fashion than if you were to sit there and think, you know what, maybe I need one of both types of clients to start out. Or maybe there's something where my savings, you know, I hit a certain amount where I feel a little bit more stable going into this so that I'm not sort of running scared um, out of the gate. Absolutely. Um, and I think that uh, it is scary, right? Like you, you've got to accept the fact that it's not as certain as what you've been used to, but you've got to kind of go with that fear. As the great philosopher Taylor Swift says, <laughs> being fearless is having a lot of fears, but you jump in anyway. I'm trying to say it like Taylor would. Yes, and I think I that's true. It. Like you just you go with a fear. Yeah. Go with the fear. Okay, so let's talk about let's talk about this a little bit more. What about for people who jump into it and they discover, hey, I'm really great at this one part. Um, I love the working with the clients and I love doing the work work part of it. I hate this this uh, running a business piece of it. I hate the day to day aspects of that. And that was certainly me, like dealing with invoices, dealing with the stuff behind the scenes. I was not inclined to want to spend the time on that bookkeeping part of it. And it took me a while before I got to the part where, you know, like I found a, a service that would do that. But in the beginning, I wanted to do it all by myself. I think that is such a good point. And, you know, in the article, I mentioned this as well, but it's very different taking a passion and turning it into a career, right? Your passion could be cycling. Your passion could be baking. Mm -hmm. but then are you ready to run a bakery? Like that's no longer just baking stuff, right? Now you're dealing with personnel. You're dealing with accounting. You're dealing with customers. You're no longer in that passion area of just making the things that you love to make. And I think that's a really important question to ask yourself. So for example, you might find in your side hustle that you're, so let's go with the baking analogy. You're selling some pies on the side, great. 
but you might want to just keep it as something fun you're doing on the side rather than something that your family and your entire income is dependent on. I think asking yourself those questions is really important. And then to your point, are you ready to do all the things that are required for running a business? I actually think association professionals who wear so many hats are well positioned to take, to go entrepreneurial because they deal with so many moving parts. They tend to have a lot of um, exposure and are responsible for budgets and finance. And they tend to have to have a hand in everything. And you kind of need to do that when you have your, when you take your side hustle and make it your main hustle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and so what are some of the, the, I guess, steps that you should take to sort of make sure that you're a good fit for the market that you're going into? And I, by the way, I just want to say that you've got some people who are loving the baking analogies. Uh, Joe says, great baking analogy, Jen. And then uh, LinkedIn user says, sometimes when folks switch from association exec to consultant, they are treated persona non grata by the association industry. And I, yeah, I've definitely seen how that's, that's worked. It can be really strange um, to go through that because you're like, I'm one of you, but I'm one of you, you know? And, um, and it is strange to see how that, that can change based off of your title that maybe it's even some of the same people that you've connected with before, but it, it changes the dynamic. So I think that's worthwhile in, in mentioning too. Absolutely. Like for me, this has happened to me with my old association, the School Nutrition Association. I'm very excited that I'm going to be speaking at their conference. So I'm no Yay. longer organizing the conference. I'm speaking <laughs> at their conference. But now I'm in a different category, right? Whereas, you know, I'd stay in the headquarters hotel automatically and I would, you know, everything would, all the costs would be offset. But more importantly, it was like I was one of them. Now I'm mm -hmm. in a different position. I still feel like they're my community and I adore them, but it's definitely a different feeling that you need to adjust to. There's a little yeah. bit more distance and that's There's okay, definitely. but it's an adjustment. It is an adjustment, especially if you connect very deeply with the role that you had in a place and those connections with others, some of them will stay the same, those personal relationships. And some of them, um, it just shifts with uh, like your title has shifted, like your role has shift, shifted and, um, and it will just change. And it can be a little bit, I, you know, I don't want to say nerve wracking. It, it can be a little bit confusing and maybe a, it rattle you a little bit um, when you're tied into very closely with that identity that you have in that role, which I did as an association executive. And before I went into doing consulting. Um, it was a strange, it was a strange transition and, and change for me. And I think, you know, thankfully association chat has helped me to continue to talk with all kinds of people and, and explore all these different perspectives, but that was definitely a challenge. You know, who am I when I'm not this role anymore? And that you bring up a great point, which is just that whole concept of identity and a change of identity when you take your side hustle and you turn it into your main hustle, there's a new identity that's going mm -hmm. with that. And I think it's really important to talk about how you reposition yourself to your network. That piece is critical because they've always thought of you as one way. Oh, Kiki does X. And then mm -hmm. suddenly you're doing something completely different. Thinking through not only how you're adapting, but how you're helping your network adapt to this new identity is really important. And I yeah. think with that goes that uncertainty of, oh, okay, I'm no longer exactly one of them, but you know what? I'm in this new space where I can offer different type of thought leadership and ideas for these people that I love working with. Yeah, so so here's the other thing. And I, I'd started to go down this path, but I got a little distracted by even just talking to you. So like, um, because, 
so many great ideas. Um, but the thing, <laughs> that I, the thing that I wanted to ask, that I started to ask was really that product, that, uh, that marketplace fit, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, do I have the right thing to offer to this particular particular marketplace at the right time? And um, do I need to maybe reframe it or think about it in a different way? And that's definitely a challenge that, that I've seen a lot of people have where it's like they're really, they, they are really sort of focused on this one type of way that they want to engage with the marketplace. And yet it's not exactly the right time or the right fit for what people are needing at that time or wanting them for. So um, how, do you, how do you suggest that people play with that maybe before they take the jump so they don't have to pivot and make a lot of changes, but can like, you know, start out on a better foot? I think that's so important. Understanding your positioning, your market fit, if you have an audience for what you're mm -hmm. offering. So I'll give you an example for myself. There's a bazillion coaches out there and there's a bazillion people calling themselves coaches. So really making sure that you have the right certifications that give you the credibility um, that you need to succeed. It was, it was very important for me. And I started out as an executive coach, which, you know, I can help people with leadership development. I can help people on the job, make things sort of, easier for them and dealing with difficult situations. I do all of those things, but I realized the area that I was most excited about and the area the market was responding most to was around this idea of career strategy and the idea of, am I in the right place I want to be in now? Do I want to change careers? If so, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. And in many ways, that positioning is still allowing me to do the other stuff. So for example, I have a client I've had for over three years now. He came to me and he said, Lex, and I want to change jobs. I hate my job. I hate my boss. And actually, he's still in the organization. He's risen through the ranks and he's at a very, very senior level. And by working together, we realized actually his issue was with his boss primarily. Mm -hmm. He actually loved what he did. And so it was executive coaching and I am his executive coach, but it came in through this idea of career strategy. And so I think thinking through what is the pain point your audience has is really important as you think about the market fit and what yeah. you want to offer. And also thinking about what is it that I like to do? So yeah. if the market wants one thing and you don't like to do it, there, there's a real issue. And your side hustle is a great way to experiment with that. Side hustle is a great way to experiment. It's a great way to, um, you know, figure out what you, what you really enjoy doing, the parts that you may not enjoy doing so much. Let's say you've discovered, uh, you know, you want to make that jump you've decided it's time. It's, I, I, I have the name of my business. I know how I want, what I want to focus on. I know who my bookkeeper is going to be. I know all these different things. Um, but then there, there are those relationships that you want to take care of. You want to make a graceful exit perhaps from your current job. Um, how can people manage that piece of it, manage that, that sort of, I don't know, that moving away from doing the, uh, I'm working for this organization and it's time for me to make my exit move in a way that's going to, I don't know, sort of be healthy and positive and, and so that everybody is feeling good and excited about this sort of move versus like, you know, well, going in a different direction, let's say. It's a real partnership, in my opinion, with the organization that you're about to leave. So first off, this is a whole other area. But when you build your side hustle, I believe you need to be really transparent with your organization. Mm -hmm. So assuming you've had full transparency, um, and even if you haven't, which I don't recommend, but let's say you've built the side hustle on the side, this organization is what allowed you to build your company, if you think about it. 
they were paying you and on the side, hopefully in the evenings and on weekends, you were building this other business. You owe them a graceful exit. You owe them a transition plan. You owe them plenty of notice. So for me, I had stayed at my organization for a very long time. So I had told the head of HR and my CEO very early on, months and months ahead of time to say, this is what I'm thinking. We planned the timing together. Um, and so we planned the announcement plan to the board and to the team. I made sure that, because I'd been there for so long, all that knowledge that was in my head, that institutional knowledge was somehow written and, or communicated to others. And I think that's so important. Now I feel like I have a really good relationship with my old organization and they had my back. Like they were really excited for me to, to do this. Uh, and I think that's really important for people to, to be transparent and honor the organization that allowed you to build this. Right. Right. You don't split and leave just because you're fired up and you're, you're like, wow, I, I you know, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to do this thing. See ya. You know, <laughs> it's like, absolutely. you definitely want to make sure that you are not just leaving on good terms, but like in your case, you had cheerleaders, you had people who were like really rooting for you because of the way that you had brought them along on your journey. I have a good friend of mine who said, you know, people don't want to watch from the sidelines. They want to join your parade, you know, like they want to be in it. They want to be a part of it. And so being part of your story, I think, um, allows people to see that they still have that place and that they can still, it's not like you're going, okay, I've had my, my, my needs are fulfilled with you now. I'm ready to move on, you know? 